All right, we did it, we're live. Hey, what's up TFWR, here we are again. Uh, we actually have, oh, where are you? I'm here. I, did I lose you? There you go. Man, this whole Zoom thing, I think, I think this week is the last week of kids in school and all this stuff, so hopefully we'll, uh, I'll have a little better internet connection here. But anyway. Yeah, I'm teaching right now. Oh, I like it. So what's up? What's up? The Florida Wrestling Room. We're here with a uh, a National Hall of Fame legendary wrestling coach, Mark DeAugustino, cousin of a uh, Florida legend, Michael DeAugustino, who's now at uh, Northwestern. So uh, it is a family of wrestlers. Uh, and um, forgive me, but I have to put my glasses on because I'm at that age now. <laughs> Me too, but I'm not reading anything. No, he's uh, originally from the Pittsburgh area, and he wrestled at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Uh, he, he's been coaching uh, Go Vols. in Duval County, or the Vols, there we go. And then the county that you've been coaching in, <clears throat> uh, I read somewhere where you are the winningest coach ever that came out of that county. Yeah, that's a possibility. I. You know, I don't keep those records, but I think that's probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I might have been the longest coach in that county, too, so. <laughs> and that helps, right? Sure does. So, so go ahead. First of all, obviously, this pandemic with the offseason has uh, caused to, caused everyone to hit the brakes here. It looks like um, I just saw where uh, Coach Cody released uh, something about USA, USA Wrestling, talking about how these clubs and training can come back. Uh, phase different phases so we'll have him on next week to talk about that but um, well, that's good to know because I didn't know that because I got my little kids on Tuesday night at the church yeah he just um, if you go into the wrestling room he just put a link there but I I put it onto my phone so I can share it with you when we get off the old Dade City Wrestling Club I like it so um, how have you been uh, keeping the kids uh, motivated during these times and then uh Go ahead and tell us all about uh, that big De Augustine uh, family lineage. Well, I'll talk about myself first since that's a good subject. I do. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just came from a family that wrestled, and uh, it's kind of neat. You had Michael on, uh, my little cuz. He calls me Uncle Mark, and I consider him my nephew. And, of course, his brother Steve and his sister Jacqueline. I mean, and, and uh, Steve, is his dad is my cousin. We grew up together in Pittsburgh and we would go to grandma's house like twice a month and have dinner or whatever. And just, you know, you knew what the family unit was and everybody wrestled. Even my uncle Rudy wrestled all three of the brothers up there uh, all wrestled in, in high school. And then my uncle Steve and my dad wrestled in college at Lock Haven. And Steve had four boys and all four boys went division one. I mean, I think uh, Michael's dad went to Maryland. Uh, their older brother, Lenny Mike, uh, he went to Ohio State. Uh, George went to Lock Haven. And Phil, I want to say, sorry, Phil. I'm going to say he went to Edinburgh. And then my, right, and then my, so then my two older brothers went to Penn State. And my oldest brother was a three-time state champ. His high school record in Pennsylvania was like 121 and one loss. And his wow. only yeah, his only loss was his sophomore year in the finals of Regions. And he lost to a tough kid from the, uh, Kevin Nellis. And there's seven Nellises that wrestled at Shaler. And there's a couple of them that are all Americans. And uh, um, I believe Craig Nellis, one of the younger brothers, he runs the uh, classic, the Pittsburgh classic now. He's a big part of that. And wow, that's then, unbelievable. So, uh, I mean, seven boys in our family all wrestled and all went to Division One colleges to wrestle. In, in our field. Right. We and need I, to somehow, I, we need to figure out how to get the whole, all the day Augustines on, hey, on, we did one, that. on one live. We actually did that uh, like a couple weeks ago. Um, God bless my uncle Steve passed away. So Michael's grandpa passed away. Oh, and I'm sorry. It's during this Corona thing and uh, nobody could fly out. No, there was no, there was nothing we could do. You know, they, we were, we were uh, quarantined and, uh, so um, they got together a big Zoom of the D'Augustino family 
and Uncle Steve, uh, he used to love drinking red wine. He always, he was a big advocate. He'd always, he always had a glass of red wine. And uh, so everybody, every D'Augustino had a glass of red wine and we made a toast to our uncle and their wow. dad and grandpa and brother and everything. So that, that, that pretty cool moment, huh? Yeah, it was really, it was, it was an incredible moment. I mean, as best as you could do on Zoom. And, uh, <laughs> and to go back uh, uh, to another generation, my dad, he was a state champ also in Pennsylvania. And then he went to Lock Haven, of course, again. And then in 1952, he uh, was an Olympian and, and went to Helsinki, Finland, and came back in 1953 and won the Division I National Championships. And he was Lock Haven's, at the time it was Lock Haven Teachers State College, and now it's Lock Haven University. Uh, but he was their first national champion in any sport. That's incredible. So your family, uh, your, your family, your, if you're a, a boy born in that, in that, uh, in that line, you, you were put on the map pretty quickly. I won my first junior Olympics at the age of five. Wow. So, yeah. And I was the worst one. I don't know if you can see this. I can see it. Yes. That's my dad in the Olympic uniform in 52. Wow. Now I got something else pretty cool to show you. This is neat. Uh, this is his plaque. Now my mom put the name tag on it back when, but this is, <laughs> this is, this is the plaque my dad got when he won the national championships in 1953. Oh man, look at that. How cool is that? That's really cool. So I had that on my wall. It was probably was, made with like real wood and real bronze and gold. Uh, I don't know then. about, now. I don't know. It sure doesn't <laughs> <Not. look> like, <laughs> It might be real bronze. I don't know, but he won the gold. So too bad it's not all gold. Yeah, there you go. It wouldn't be on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about donating it, but I really like it. It's just a part of me. Uh, I really, uh, I was thinking about donate to Lock Haven's. Uh, uh, they have a Hall of Fame up there, and he's of course in that and everything. It's kind of neat. You walk in, they got all these plaques and everything all over the place, and this room in their gym up there. And when oh, you walk, right. Yeah, when you walk in there, they have a picture of Michael's grandpa and my dad. It's a giant, almost life size oil painting of them. Um, really? My dad's standing there and my Uncle Steve's kneeling. And I'll bet <laughs> you anybody that's wrestled at Lock Haven or been to Lock Haven has seen it. And they'll go, oh, yeah, man, I've seen that painting. Oh, man. So what a family. So talk about your journey a little bit. Talk about, I know you started at five, you won your first. Uh, Junior Olympics at the age of five. Wow. And then uh, from there, uh, take us I was, through it. I was, I was the only D'Augustino in my family. Um, that didn't win a state title. My dad was a state champ. My brother Scott was a state champ. My brother Mike was a state champ. And I was the only one that didn't lose or didn't win. And we had an opportunity and it, it kills me. To this day, it still kills me. Uh, I was a sophomore and we weren't allowed to wrestle as freshmen back then. It was against the uh, Pennsylvania rules, PAIA rules. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And the year <laughs> after I graduated, you could wrestle as a freshman. And they only placed one and two, and now they place six, I think. Either one or went home. Yeah, I know, I know they place six here in Florida. Yeah, they place six or eight now in Pennsylvania. I think eight. So anyways, um, I was the youngest of three. Uh, now, my brothers were older than me when they were in school. I was on the younger end of that spectrum because I was like 17 when I graduated high school. And when I was done my senior year in wrestling in college, I was 21. I mean, when I was 17, college started. So I just turned 18 in August and I was wrestling 25, 26 year old men. I remember wrestling. Yeah. Uh, these guys, yeah, they go in the Navy or the army, then they come back and go to school and I'm wrestling these beasts. And, but it, it was pretty cool. Uh, I was 98, six and one in high school. And you would think, damn, in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, the wrestling hotbed, that that's awesome. I saw it. <laughs> I, I, you know, yeah, I was, I was, you know, I, yeah, you know, I, I sucked. So, <laughs> and isn't that weird? Isn't that terrible to think? But that's, and, and now when I look at it and I sit back and I'm older and I've been a coach forever, I mean, it was pretty amazing to be able to do that. And my, you know, like I had six losses and I believe 
four of them, four of the six were the state champions. Wow. Yeah. yeah um, that's incredible. And, and so when did you, uh, when did you make the move down to Florida? Well, I went to school at Tennessee, of course. And the backstory on that is Gray Simons was my coach in college. And he kind of stole my dad's thunder at Lock Haven because dad, of course, was the first national champ, right? And anything. And then Gray came in and they weren't allowed to wrestle as freshmen either in college. Now, NAIA, he could, but NCAA, D1, he couldn't. So he was a seven time national champion. And I think there's only, I think there's only one. I think Gray's the only seven time. I think Carl, Carlton Hasselrig's a six time national champ. I think he won three NAIA or D2s, and then he won three D1s. Oh, wow. But Gray won seven. Not, not a bad run. And then Gray was a two-time Olympian, 60 and 64, Rome and Tokyo. And wow, uh, that's like the, uh, the guys here. I think there's only five, five-time Florida State champs, and two of them are brothers. <laughs> yeah, and my son, when he was younger, got to wrestle one of them. <laughs> and <finally. laughs> That didn't work out for him, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gave him gave him his fifth, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah those, it those was a great guys. match, though. I mean, it was a great match. That's awesome. Up, like nine five or something like that. It was, it was. Uh, se- I thought it should have been seven six or five six five, and there was a big argument, and I went to the table, and people were going crazy and everything, and, and they said, "Okay, this is what the score is. Score six five. Uh, pass goes down and, and uh, little Nordstrom boy would, would always cut John because John's crazy on bottom, right? And uh, so I figured it's going to be a 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven match with a minute to go in the, in the match. And so I sat down and told me I can't get back up again. You know how that is. Coach, this is what score is. You sit down, whatever. And it's 6-5, six, pass goes down. Brandon's on top. I said, all right, you know, I thought it should be 7-6, seven, but 6-5 I can add. It's still a one-point match. Let's go. You know, right. <laughs> then, then I sit down. I'm not allowed to get back up because he told me don't get back up. Right. I get back up. I'm out. And uh, Russ gets up, Coach Kozak, and, he goes <laughs> over, and the score goes to I think it, it ended up it, it was six, five and it went to seven, four. And I was like, oh, wait a second. Man. Are you, are you, are you going to tell me that this How'd is that what happen? It is? go sit down? And then I go sit down and you go and uh, change the score. But uh, yeah, he, he's a tough kid, tough wrestler, great family. I mean, what a beautiful story that is, man. Those guys are uh, just first class people. Yeah, I had, um, I had, I had Kevin on. And uh, I mean, he went into stuff where I was just sitting there like this. Yeah, he's amazing. And then he had to stop I, and he stopped and looked at me and said, do you, do you have anything to say? I'm like, no, please keep going. I'm like, this is good. So Kyle's coming on next week. So uh, uh, great, next week or the week after, I forget when he hit, when he was free, but I know his brother Kevin said he might jump on with him for a little bit, but. Uh, yeah, their dad, yeah. their dad told me afterwards, he says, you know, when we were doing this the whole way through the year, because I think John wrestled Kyle four times that year. I mean, he wrestled him in a, in a tournament. It, it, oh, he wrestled him at the uh, Epolito in the finals, got hammered. <laughs> and then he wrestled him in the district finals. And then he wrestled him in the regional finals. And then he wrestled him in the state finals. Wow. And they said of all the wrestlers in the weight class, they did not want to wrestle John in the finals. And sure enough, they had to wrestle John in the finals. So, I mean, that was a pretty, One, uh, pretty nice thing to say too. I mean. Yeah, I mean, that, that's crazy. I mean, 10 state championships in one house. That's pretty that's dope. Just craziness, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so that's awesome. So, uh, so then you you've been coaching now in uh, in wrestling. How many years? Well, you just retired this year, right? Yeah. What did, what did I say? Uh, uh, was it uh, was it Chris Chris Hayworth uh, coaches down at Riverdale? Uh, he, uh, I, I went I went and watched him get inducted in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. I, I believe. Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I think Jim uh, Reap from Clay also was inducted that same year. So I got to see some of the, you know, wrestling friends get, get inducted. And Chris said, I was going to steal it too, but I didn't. He says, I think in part of his speech was, uh, if you do anything long enough, they either give you a gold watch or put you in a hall of fame. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, what, what they said that uh, it said you were the 
winningest coach in your county? Was it Duval? Uh, Pasco. Pasco County. And, and what'd you say? That's because nobody did it as long as me. <laughs> That's, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So um, obviously Florida wrestling has, has come a very long way since you started coaching here. And well, I watched uh, it. I watched it happen. I watched the talent pull. And I think, you know, because so many good coaches are here, you know, I, I don't know if it's in it's got sick and tired of the snow and came down here and, and now they're really involved. And some of the programs are just, you know, amazing. You know, oh, and, and talk about the difference of Florida wrestling, you know, 20, 30 years ago, whenever you got involved into it to what you, where you see it at today and, and, and where, where, what do we need to do to be able to compete or have the, be a hotbed like these Pennsylvania, New Jersey? That's, you know, it's probably easier to answer that question as of today and not 30 years ago. Um, and what I mean by that is today, I'll take our top one or top two wrestlers in each weight, in every weight class. So if you were to have a tournament of champions, which we did try to have, um, and you take, your top four from 1A, 2A, 3A, and, and you could somewhat how magically come up with your top two guys. They could compete nationally against anybody in the country, if not win. Wow. But, three, but three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down to whatever, the depth is not there yet. Whereas in Pennsylvania, you could wrestle a kid that qualified for the state championships and he'd be a bad dude. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or New Jersey or New York or Ohio. I mean, that, and I guess, you know, if you're talking 30 years, 50 years, 60 years ago, what else are you going to do in the wintertime? If you're not over six foot, you got to wrestle. <laughs> you're not playing basketball, right? No. And, and <laughs> down, at least down here, you know, you can play <laughs> baseball all year round. You can run track all You can play football year round. You can do whatever. And I pity the schools that are near the shore. Hey man, I'm going surfing, dude. <laughs> how, do you, how, do you, how do you fight that? Hey, come to practice. <laughs> yeah, right. The waves are calling me. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, I, that happens. I why, yeah, I see why there's not a whole lot of depth yet. But you know, we have the wrestlers that can compete at the highest level and win. Yeah, I mean, look at uh, I mean, Pat Lugo, is number one in the country at his weight right now. Florida kid. Yeah. Is, um, it, is it Brentley? Brentley's going there. Yeah, what is God? I mean, all those guys. I mean, there's a whole bunch of uh, your um, your nephew or cousin, My your nephew, co cousin, nephew, nephew, cousin. <laughs> he's he's starting to make some waves, right? I mean, he had a hell of a year. Yeah, I would have uh, liked to see that play out. He was on fire. There's a whole lot of uh, a lot of the Florida kids out there, especially in the high school ranks. Um, you're starting to see them take over, and what's really cool. And I had no idea because I didn't know the first thing about wrestling other than I watched my kid wrestle. And as I started this platform, as I felt like wrestling needed someone to do this. Um, and we did. I've, I've learned a bunch, you know, I've learned a bunch. And um, I can't believe how many really good coaches in colleges across the country our head coaches, assistant head coaches, women's coaches, women's assistant coaches. Out of Florida? They all, all came out of Florida, and they, they're part of amazing programs, and they're building, and they're doing amazing things, and that's, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Scotty's getting the head coach there, Scotty Santos. Yeah, over yeah. at Campbell, right? Yeah, that's another great family of wrestling right there. How about uh, he got and, and he got those Rivera twins going there, man. That's uh, yeah, that's a nice, yeah, it's good pickup. <laughs> oh, you hit the jackpot there, not just wrestling wise, but human beings. They're just what a family. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and you've got uh, what is it? Uh, um, the kid that Chris beat in the finals. He's going with Cal Shahir, Frankie. He's going to Northwestern, uh -huh. right? Yeah. With uh, with your cousin. Uh, man, that's going to be something. He's a tough wrestler. And those guys out there. Uh, you've got uh, uh, the kid from uh, Noah Castillo, who yep. is coming on next week. He's going to U UT, Tennessee, Chattanooga, or whatever. UTC? I think so, yeah. I think so. I didn't I know he was going to UTC. That's, that's a pretty good little program. 
Is uh, Bono, so. is it Bono, 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 Chris Bono's there? I is think so. Maybe your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. <laughs> I know where I know where he's going. So I, I believe that. Around, those guys bounce around a lot. Yeah, I believe that's where he said. I guess he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, a lot of Lake Gibson g- boys. A lot of Lake Gibson boys have been going to Duke too. Yeah, and uh, and there's a few of them that are going over to Campbell, right? Or at least one of them I know is going to Campbell. Uh, um, Glenn I, Lanham, I, the head coach up there at Duke. I was his captain at Tennessee. He wrestled at Tennessee, was an All-American for us, and then Tennessee got Title IX, and uh, he went to Oklahoma. And then he went to Oklahoma State and became a three-time All-American. He was a two-time All-American for Oklahoma State. So he was oh yeah, there's kids everywhere. I know. I'm, I'm trying to get the the big guy on Matt Kaplan from this year. He's going to Air Force. I'm trying to get see if he wants to come on and chat. But That's me. man, great kids. I've got. Uh, Oh, Ethan Basile's going to Northern Iowa. I believe I had him. All on. right, all right, good. So, man, these kids out of Florida—they're going to some schools and having a good time. So, I know that um, uh, Florida is really trying to get girls' wrestling sanctioned. How I, important? I, why is it? How, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. And how important is it? And also, how? I mean, they've grown to over three hundred girls in the state tournament, and. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it it's would not be, 1920 it, anymore. It would be triple that. <laughs> if, if they, I guarantee it would double if girls – I mean, there's I, I, every girl I talk to, I'd wrestle if they had girls wrestling coach. So, I mean, yeah, and I mean, I talked to Coach Chris Ayers from Princeton, and he said it got sanctioned in New Jersey, and this year there was 760 girls or something at the state. Right, which means Florida will have more. Yeah, yeah they, 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 you know, get it now so you're you're on top of it. Don't be 10 years behind. You know, that, that, all you're doing is hurting yourself, hurting, hurting the girls. Yeah, and these, um, I mean, the, I don't get it. You, you want you want more um, more eyes on the state, more eyes on the sport, uh, especially at the youth level. How do we keep kids off the street? We put them in sports. And um, why not do that for them? Get more girls in the room, get them growing, keep people off the street, keep kids in a, you know, build their confidence. Well, just not only that, uh, the scholarships are out there for these girls. So it's another way out. It's another way to go to college where, hey, I don't have the money to pay for college, man. You know, there they got another out. Yeah, I spoke to uh, Aralis. Valles last night and she was um, she wrestled here in Florida she was the first girl in like 10 years to qualify for boys state Um, and she she'll tell you she told me yesterday that it was it was tough um, being a girl in this sport back then because you really were frowned upon and she says it's really refreshing now to be able to walk into rooms and be looked at as an equal and uh not have to worry. I don't want to wrestle her. I don't want to wrestle that person. And um, just like coach Morgan said yesterday that it's nice that we can bring girls to tournaments now. And it's just another wrestler. It's not, it's not a big issue. So I don't know if I've ever frowned ever. I mean, I've had some, I I even had a, you know, how they had the United States girls wrestling association. And I had a girl in 06 and Jessica, don't get mad at me if I had that date wrong. But I want to say it's 06. And uh, she ended up going to the USGA, United States, USGWA. And uh, she became a state champ there. And uh, she had 16 or 17 girls in her weight class, which I thought was pretty cool. And then that was her junior year. And then her senior year, she blew her shoulder out, right? And uh, our districts was the same time as the girls' state championships. So I said, man, just go to the girls' state championships, have your dad take you. I'm sorry, I can't take you this time, but go see how you do with one arm because you're not going to beat a guy with one arm. I mean, it's hard enough to beat a guy with two arms if you're a girl. I hate saying that, but it's true. And uh, and, and she said in high school, like the younger, you know, when you're in high school, girls and boys could have the same strength at the same weight class, the same power. But she said, as you get to where you start to become 17, 18, 19, and you're getting into college, you know, 
it just doesn't work. The man can just get so much stronger. Well, I even I'd even say at 13 and 14, that starts to happen. So, I mean, but when you're younger, when you're like one to 10, girls sometimes are just stronger, tougher, and quicker. But then that- well, we, we know they're tougher because we, we married them. Yes, you're right. And I know, I know mine's tougher than me. <laughs> I always like to say I'm smarter and people go, how can, they say, how can you say that? And I said, well, I got her to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> Slick. Uh, so wh- what is, um, and let's see, we got time here. I don't have to get off. I'd like to ask, what is your most memorable moment in wrestling? Oh, there's so many. My first state champ, um, watching my brother win a state title. And I could tell you what my hardest moment was. And, I, you know, I know which one is my favorite ever all time most emotional experience is when John won and jumped into my arms, my own son. I mean, but you can't, are you allowed to put that in the same category as all the other years of wrestling, the uh, 59 years of wrestling that I've had in my life? Is that fair to put that? On that I, I think so. I, I think. Okay. Well, then, I, there, there, you can't even argue the point. <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, if I talked to Sal Basile and he said, all my years of wrestling, the greatest feeling was, was Ethan's first. I believe it. And, and, you know, I turned around and I looked and there were 15 coaches with tears in their eyes. So, you know, that was just an emotional experience. Yeah. Was, Not that he doesn't love both sons. But Ethan won the first one, so. <laughs> uh, I've got the little one coming on next, so i got to make sure I don't say anything. That's right. That's, that's, good. <laughs> that's funny. So yeah, talk about uh, what getting into the Hall of Fame has meant for you. And I know uh, there's, there's a family lineage there. And I know that uh, the old joke, well, if you do it long enough, you, you get some awards, yeah. right? But yeah. um, but let's be real. I mean, you've done a lot for wrestling and, and you deserve it. And how did it feel to finally get that, uh, that opportunity? Uh, you know, it, it was pretty humbling when I went and I was there, you know, I'm hoping five people show up, you know, at least my family <laughs> is going to be there. Right. And I, you know, I had probably seven, eight tables full uh, in, in the ballroom. And wow. I was, and I had people come from like nine States to come see me. And how cool is that? You talk about, you know, tugging at the heartstrings and, and wanting to cry when you see these people like, wow, came from Ohio. Wow, you came from uh, Kentucky. Wow, you came from South, uh, uh, Alabama, you know. I mean, it, it was just amazing. You came from Georgia. Wow, you flew all the way in from Colorado, man. It's, you know, it, it, it was just, it, it was a, a very, probably without a doubt, the most humbling weekend of my life. Your second favorite moment behind John jumping in your arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no. sorry I'm sorry you're third because if your wife is listening, you did get married to her. So we want to make sure we keep you alive there in that house. Yes, yeah, she's, so right. she's zooming <laughs> in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> so it's your third favorite. <laughs> she didn't hear me. I can talk big when she's not around. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. Um, to add to the Hall of Fame, and I know you touched on this with Michael, but it's, it's really cool. Um, I'm the fourth D'Augustino in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Wow. Yeah. So talk about that. There's you, right? Yeah. Michael's dad, Steve. And his with- dad, Steve. And my dad, Gus. They call His name's Leonard, but they call him Gus. They don't call him Steve, too? <laughs> my middle name's Steve. <laughs> And my, Steve's brother, Steve's dad is Steve. Steve's brother, Lenny Mike, has a son, Steve. And my and, was Steve. At my wedding, I, I went up to the DJ booth and I said, hey, ask Steve the Augustino to come up to the DJ booth. There were like 12 of them came over there. <laughs> I thought, now, Michael has a brother that wrestled as well, right? Steven. <laughs> Steven. And, and he was apparently a really good wrestler. And he and went, I went and watched him to UCF, him. right? Yeah, I watched him wrestle in the national championships up at, I think it was Mercer University up in Georgia. 
and he made it to the finals. He was a national runner up, but man, is he tough. And, and uh, he could he he could have been a two time state champ. You know how that is. You know the chips fall where they may. And uh, God, he was tough. Just you know, he was a good little athlete. What would you tell like um, instead of going to a big college? I'm I'm sorry. Instead of going to a big wrestling college, he decided to stay home at UCF and he he pursued wrestling through the club and got to experience big matches and big tournaments. Um, that's pretty good for kids to know. I mean, you don't necessarily need to be at a big, big division one program to get an education and still pursue your passion. Right. I hundred percent agree. And with the way title nine has cut uh, and they have, I hate saying it, but they've cut probably over 600 plus programs since 70, when it went in 72. Is that when it went into effect? 79, 72. Something like that. And that's a whole lot of programs for a whole lot of opportunity for a whole lot of kids. And just being, a, you know, having Steven do that it, in this, in this area and that area over there on the East coast that let kids know that there's opportunity and that opportunity is pretty cool. I mean, it's, so it's cool. Uh, before I get, before I get into these 10 questions, I've got another question for you since you've seen where wrestling has come, how close do you think uh, the state of Florida is to getting a, a division one wrestling program? If it was up to me, we'd have it tomorrow. Or you and everyone else. <laughs> you know, it, it amazes me that we don't. And because of the men that wrestling produces, the mentality, the, 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 the work ethic, the, the desire, the determination, that just that you know the type of individual that wrestling creates and when you think of almost 700 programs being cut times let's just say 25 in each program over 40 years 50 years how many incredible men that could have been trained and created mentally and physically that could be out in this country teaching young ones how to be you know how, how to become men yeah and i mean and also you That's have right. you have a kid that let's say they got a partial scholarship to wrestle to go to school and that helped them so they can go to school now the program gets cut now they financially they can't make it now they're back home so you just cost them an, a, an education at some level as well um it's kind of tough to to see kids to see that happen to them. That's a, that's a tough pill to swallow, man. <laughs> well, let's go to this. Are you ready? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, wait. Before that, I could tell you were quarantined for 60 days. I wanted to think <laughs> because you know, you know what you didn't know, I don't think? What? Big Mac has a double Big Mac, and it is outrageous. Oh man, I got, I have to get one of those. I'm telling you, do you know how they had the double quarter pounder cheese? Yes. They have the double big now. It is, so, it was so good. Man, I need to drive there tonight and get a double Big Mac. Oh uh, yes, you do. I, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> my, my son is probably back there like, no, you're fat. You can't have that. I want you to live till you're a hundred. No, but, uh, get fat. You deserve this one. Get fat. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So you're down by three going into the third period and you have choice. Are you going top, bottom or neutral? Um, am I in college or in high school? Mm. There's no riding high school. Time. There's no riding time in high school. High school. I'm going down. Oh, well, you know, wait a second. I shouldn't even say it depends <laughs> on if I'm wrestling a legger, I might be on my feet, man. I, uh, I had Dubuque. You better know on. who you're wrestling. Yeah, I had Dubuque on from Princeton, and he said, "Well, if I'm wrestling Simmons, I'm going top, but everyone else, I'm going bottom." <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, do you put? Go, yeah, get it. Go with Kyle Dake. I'm going on my feet uh, because I might yeah. have a chance. I'm not going down. <laughs> do you prefer folk style or freestyle? Ah, uh, folk style. I like the uh, the three dimensions of wrestling top bottom and on your feet. And I think freestyle kind of takes away bottom wrestling and 
and bottom wrestling's fun, man. It, it, you know, that's part of, I mean, if you're in a fight and you're down on the ground, you better get out or you can get whooped. Yeah. And, and what do I know about like girls rest? Like I asked a girl yesterday, <laughs> Hey, I, what did I say to her? You're down by three. Are you going top, bottom or neutral? She goes, I wrestle freestyle. There is none of that. I'm like, Oh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> headgear or no headgear? Uh, I'm I'm a headgear kind of guy. Uh, I I just you know, like I I don't understand the badge of courage. And I see it all the time. In my dad's wrestling room growing up, because my dad was my coach through high school. Uh, we had hooks on the wall, and if you didn't have your headgear, you didn't wrestle. And my, my ears my ears are still pretty after all these years. <laughs> So um, you Except can answer this. this. I, got, I got this one bit off in a fist fight. Oh, so you can answer this one either as a coach taking your kids or you can answer it as a wrestler, however you want to do it. But you have, you only have one day available to train. Do you go to a rumble or a clinic? Uh, probably a rumble. Uh, just more bodies and, 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 you know, I don't know. I, I, we, I, I, could, I could show you moves during that rumble. I can tweak you while you're wrestling. I could pull you aside and, and say, hey, you know, you, you need to have inside tie here. You, you don't need to be outside tie. You're giving, you know, give it, you know, you could coach through a little bit of that rumble, whereas clinics, you know, you watch great coaches. Uh, but now that's only because I have one chance. I mean, that's if, right. Yeah, of course. If you're my, if you're my athlete and I know you know how to train and I know you get in shape and I know you're a bad little dude and, and you're just missing a little bit of technique. I'm going to send you to a technique camp. Like I'll send you to Penn state technique camp, go to church hall or, or, or go to Campbell, go, go somewhere or go to Florida pride band. And, you know, they have some great clinicians come in and just go, you know, go and do that. That 28 day, man, that's, you know, that, it, I'll just, it, you learn how to train and become a bad dude because you're training for 28 days. Nobody, not too many high school kids are doing that during the summer. So you're yeah. coming out of there. Oh, right you, now, no one's doing it, right? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, a technique camp for five days and you got six multiple national champions at that camp, gold medalists and stuff. Heck yeah. But if I only have a choice for one day, I'll take the rumble. I like it. Who wins the rematch, Swain or Shoot? Swain. <laughs> Which title holds more prestige, the 32 or the Fargo? Did I lose you? Uh, I still, I can hear you now, but you're, you're froze. There you are. I said Super okay. 32. Okay. What's more dominant, a pin I'm or a, a tech? I'm a, I'm a folk style coach. You know, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you what's more dominant, a pin or a tech? And that's a tough question because when I was a kid, you don't mind a little bit of a long answer here. <laughs> I, I, I wrestled in, in, in that time and I won it. And I, I said, uh, uh, I called my grandpa, my pop up who lived there. I said, Pop up, I won. And he says, Well, did you pin the kid? I said, No, sir. I said, No, sir, but I won like three to one. So, did you pin the kid? I said, no, sir. I won three to one. He says, what's the object of wrestling? I said, to pin a kid. He said, did you pin him? I said, no, sir. He said, well, then he didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> so in his mind, pinning is the ultimate. I mean, that's what we do the sport for is we're supposed to put your back to the mat, hold you down, and that's what's make our, our sport incredible to me. You and me are the same size. We wrestle each other. You take me down put me to my back, hold me there and pin me without hurting me. That folks is an art. How do you do that? <laughs> you know, you can't go against joints. You can't punch me. You can't gouge me. You, you know what I mean? You can't, how? It's such a spectacular art when you think about it that you have to take me down, put me on my back and hold me there and pin me without hurting me. It's, a, it's an incredible sport. So I'm going to say, you know, a tech is pretty dominant, man. It kind of, but you know, why are you teching them, man? The object of the sport is to pin them. So if you're teching people, shame on you. Pin their butt. <laughs> pin their butt. There we go. Stick Sorry, Steve them. Hall. <laughs> That's right. All right. You prefer Popeyes or Chick Fil A? 
I, you know, I have never had the Popeye's chicken sandwich, so I'm going to go Chick-fil-A, man. All right. Do you prefer... Uh, I never have. When you're having an ice cold beer, do you prefer a burger or wings? Probably wings. I like Something. it. And I think I know your answer here. Whopper or Big Mac? Oh, double Big Mac. Not even Big double Mac. Double Big Mac. You need to change that question. <laughs> change that. Double <laughs> Whopper or double Big Mac? Double Big Mac, man. When you I love got, it. You'll be like, this is, this is, this is like heaven. <laughs> I can't wait. I'll have to go live and do that as well. Oh, man. You're going to love that one, man. Hey, I really do appreciate you coming on. And I do appreciate having Michael on. It was awesome. And if there's any other day Augustinos out there that want to come on, I'm good with that. And yeah, if dude, there you go, get get Michael's dad Steve because he's in the Hall of Fame and he coached at Flagler. His team's won state titles, a couple of them. Oh, and if his if his sister wants to tell me the traffic live, we can do that as go. well. <clears throat> so that'll be awesome. Hey, thank you so much. Um, I do appreciate you. You do have my link. Please share it with anybody who wants to come on who'd like to talk wrestling. Um, I just love doing this, and I, and I love all you coaches who do this for the kids. I think it's awesome that you decided to do this, and we do it. I just wish we could do it like on a Friday evening, prime time, where everybody's home, and they could sit and, you know, tune in. So I, let's I, do I, it. Uh, tell, me, um, tell me a Friday you want to do it, and tell me what time you want to do it. Uh, I, and it I does, don't know it about does. me. You might want to get someone way more exciting than me. <laughs> we can get them all. We can get whoever you want on. We can do it at that if you want to get more family members on, I can send everybody a link. And okay, um, we could actually have a wrestling coaches, coaches panel and have some great names and zoom everybody in and ask questions and have like a, yeah. have a night that's nights of the round table kind of thing. Yeah, let's do it. And even though I don't, even though my, my schedule of lives goes to four, the good thing is it's my show. So I can set the date <laughs> and the time. So if, if you want to come on it, at six o'clock at night with everybody, let, just give me a call or give me a text. We'll do it. Yeah, what did Bo Nichols say? It's what we do. <laughs> it's what we do. Yeah. So there we go. I like it. That's and I one of the best I'm, lines of all time in wrestling history. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure Ricky wouldn't mind me doing a a happy hour show with your family. So that'd be cool. And then that way you could ask Steve. You know why? You know I never even asked that question. Why did you choose to go to UCF? I mean, what a great move it was. You ended up being a national runner up, and you got a ring. And it's, you know, what a cool move. And you're one of the, maybe I don't, he might be beaten now, but I think he holds the record for the most wins in wrestling history at UCF, stuff like that. Wow. I would love to know those answers. Yeah, let's do it, man. Uh, you have, um, well, you can't sign up on the link, but um, I'll message you my cell phone number when we get off of here right. and you'll have it. And then once you talk to your family and figure out a, a Friday night, you want to do it. Let me know, and, and then I'll create a link, and I'll create a show, and I'll send you the link for that show, and we'll do it. And not to sound sexist, we'll get Jacqueline on, too, so at least we have something to look at while we're looking at each other. I'm not, I'm not allowed to say that she's attractive at all because no? I'm live on this show. No, obviously she's a very good-looking woman. and You know, she was a Cincinnati Bengal cheerleader, too. Yes, and she definitely looks way better on West 2 than the last person that used to tell us about the traffic, so good for her. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> I, I mean, I got to admit it, right? Yeah. She's way Thank better you. looking than you and I. That is a fact. There you go. <laughs> All right, sir. Take care. All right, man. Thanks, Dan. Yep. Peace.